Welcome to the Be Well Buzz podcast, your number one weekly source for natural health and wellness. Welcome to the Be Well Buzz podcast. Today's podcast is all about fat loss. As a matter of fact, we're sharing the five biggest fat loss pitfalls. This is nutritionist Sean Stevenson, and this is some really volatile information today because many people don't know this, but 97 to 98% of all people in our modern society who set out to lose their excess body fat or to lose weight end up failing within five years of starting their plan. Now, we've all seen this. We've all been a victim of this, you know, trying a new plan and getting some results and then it tapering off or trying different things and never quite seeing the results we want. We're actually dipping into a situation today that most people, we're talking about most people, actually fail at. Those numbers should scare you a little bit, 97 to 98%. It should put some fear in you, all right, to understand what you're up against. But today we're providing this information to give you leverage so that you're one of the people who are the shining example of what's possible in health and fitness. And it's really more so about what you avoid than what you're doing and when it comes to fat loss because most people are doing, doing, doing their human doings rather than human beings. And we're just going to help to set you up to avoid the big problems that most people run into. So let's get started with number one. The number one biggest pitfall in any fat loss program is eating wrong for your metabolic type. Now, what does that mean? What is this metabolic type? Well, just like your fingertips are completely unique from every other human being on the planet, your metabolism is completely unique from every other human being on the planet. So there's no such thing as a, quote, balanced diet that's the same for every human being, no matter what any guru or health expert will tell you that their diet plan is great for everyone. It's simply not true. It's not true for every human being, let alone two people sitting at the same table. Your body types are completely different. Your metabolism is completely different. And we need to adhere to that and understand that and to find out what your metabolic type is and how to leverage it, how to get the best foods into your body to really make your metabolism run at its optimal level. Now, number one, I'm just going to give you an overview because it's such an in-depth topic. And if I'm not talking to you directly sitting here and evaluating myself I'm going to need you to step up and to own this yourself and find out what your metabolic type is so that you can help and share this with other people and get the results yourself. So metabolic typing, the overarching foundation of it is understanding macronutrients, you know, the fats, the carbohydrates or the protein, which one of these fuels run best in your system, but it doesn't stop there. And this is where you need to pay close attention because it can get a little bit tricky. You also need minerals to activate leptin, which is the satiety hormone. And this is what keeps you from running around like a maniac trying to eat everything is when you can have leptin activated in your system. And on the other hand, minerals and trace minerals deactivate ghrelin, which from your stomach lining, pancreas, and hypothalamus working together in various ways, they secrete ghrelin, which I call it the ghrelin gremlin. And this will have you running all over the place, chasing after everything, running and not running to try and eat it. Okay, if if your ghrelin is running wild in your system, you've got a problem. So we need to understand how to activate leptin, deactivate ghrelin, and fuel our body with the proper macronutrient profile. So hopefully that didn't sound too complicated. There's a much more in-depth and concentrated understanding of this in my program, The Fat Loss Code. And I actually put in there my recommended program for finding out your metabolic type. And my system, my approach is based on a system that's a few thousand years old in use and practicality. And to my knowledge, I'm the first person to take it and imbue it with the modern understanding of macronutrients. So we're getting something that has historical value as well as the hardcore science to back it up. And with my clients and with everybody who's gotten their hands on this program, And using the protocol to find out their metabolic type, the results are just astounding. And also what's there is giving you the little tips for, because it's not just 
do fast work good with my system, you really need to understand the quality of the fats, the proteins, and the carbohydrates that you're bringing into your body. That's more important than anything else. And another critical understanding that you really need to take on and as well as share this with the people in your life is that your body is always in flux. So even when you get a handle on your metabolic type, it's likely to change at some point and you really need to honor that. And rather than giving you more laws and rules and dogma that you can never break, I'm providing with intelligent guidelines and high leverage tools so that as you change, your program can change. As you adjust, your program can adjust. As life changes, you can change. And being more flexible, that's what my program is all about. And understand following anyone's diet 100% is problematic. It is going to set you up for failure. And you've seen this before, right in your life. If someone, your next door neighbor or your friend is on a particular program and you get on the program and it just doesn't work, it's because you're not honoring your metabolic type. But at some point, it could work for you. But it's right now. It's finding out what works right now and having the tools to be able to listen to your body. And that's very, very difficult for a lot of people because there's so much crap just layered on top of us, be it mental crap, emotional crap, psychosomatic, physical stuff, stress. There's so much put on us right now that it's hard to just turn within and listen to our body. And I really pride myself on giving people the tools to be able to break through all that stuff. Oh, and one more important nugget here, and this one just came to me, and it's so important, and you will not hear this anywhere else. You will never find out what your metabolic type is if you have a parasite infection or a fungal infection. And this is because those critters are actually behind the scenes running your metabolism. So they're going to be pointing you in the wrong direction oftentimes. So getting rid of those things. So even if you have a suspicion that you have a parasite infection or a fungal infection, which is a whole subject in and of itself, you want to get onto a gentle detoxification program, something that can be done every day and just gently creates the terrain in your body that the parasites don't like rather than trying to go after them with some hardcore parasite destruction program where these these guys are really clever and you've actually created a nice home for them. So going on a program that tries to get rid of them really quickly is destructive to you as well. So this is, I know this is a very in-depth subject, but I'm just giving you some powerful nuggets here. Take it simple, take it slow, do a daily detox. And that's in the program as well to give people a simple tool to get started, to get their body cleaner, hit the reset button and start to get some better results. So let's jump into number two now. And this one is huge. The number two biggest fat loss pitfall is cutting calories. Cutting calories is one of the worst things you can do if you're wanting to lose fat, if you're wanting to lose weight. And where this all roots from is classically trained nutrition experts will continue to remind you that a calorie is a calorie is a calorie. You know, we got the whole less calories in, expend more calories out doing exercise, whole paradigm, and everybody's been trying that. Why isn't it working? And this is why you can see people going after the 100 calorie snack treats, the reduced calorie diet, foods and beverages, and they're still shaped like a copy machine. And this is because they're following this whole mindset that all calories are created equal when nothing can be further from the truth. And we've really got to grab the reins on this one and say, no, we're not listening to that old dogma. And why is this stuff even being taught? Matter of fact, let me share this with you. Many people don't know this, but their institutional education from nutritionists and people in the field of nutrition who are taught at universities, and I'm, I'm actually one of them. I went to the universities, brainwashed in a way, and not brainwashed, but just taught bad science, okay, and not being as successful in helping my clients, is that these nutritional institutions are funded by packaged and processed food companies, okay? Like General Mills, for example, funds the nutrition program in universities. So guess what food we're going to be pumping? We're going to be talking about the bottom of the pyramid, get six to 11 servings of grains, 
now knowing today that grains are a new introduction into the human food supply. Through our whole evolution, humans were not consuming grains like this. Now we're being taught that that's the main thing you should be eating. And that parallels the rapid increase in body fat in our society today. Eating more grains and gluten, carbohydrates, has created this society of overweight, sick, unhealthy people. And people are trying so, so hard to lose weight. They really are. But they're getting a bunch of bad science, a bunch of bad information. Now, why? Cutting calories is such a huge pitfall is that the body's response to calorie restriction is to decrease the number of enzymes that burn fat. Okay? If you need to rewind it, rewind it. And the body's response to calorie restriction is to increase the number of enzymes that store fat. So if you're taking that approach of restricting your calories, boom, decreasing the number of enzymes that burn fat. This is a survival mechanism. We're talking about this beautiful human body that you have that has eons of evolution behind it. And when you take away the calories, all of a sudden you restrict the calories, your evolutionary blueprint is saying, "Uh uh-oh, there's a famine. We need to store more fat. This is built into you. So this is why cutting calories is a huge mistake. And actually, to give you some more science on it, the body just after going on a calorie restriction, it begins to alter your hormone levels and reducing your metabolic rate so that you can survive this famine, this reduced caloric intake. This is built into the matrix. It's built into the program. So cutting calories, huge mistake. This is an evolutionary blueprint that you're trying to fight against. Millions of years of evolution versus I'm going to cut the calories this week. That's not a good idea. You know, you can lose some, quote, weight for a moment. Absolutely, you can. But you're turning down your metabolism in a way that as soon as you start eating again, it's going to start storing fat like crazy. So we don't want to get suckered into this whole cutting calories business. Now, the good news is if you eat according to your metabolic type with high quality food, then it's quite difficult to overeat, period. And it's simply because your apostat in your brain is functioning appropriately When you're eating the foods that are right for your metabolic type, overeating is not even a reality to you because you're actually getting nourished. Your body is doing all the things, letting your entire system know that there is food available, we're doing well, stress is normalized, all is well. That's where we want to be at. That's where we want to live. And that starts with understanding your metabolic profile and not cutting your calories. It's not about that. Your body knows what weight to be at. It knows. It's such an intelligent, beautiful organism, and we just got to give it the conditions to let it do what it normally does, which is to burn fat. But when we try screwing around with taking food away from it, it will revolt, rebel, and the results are not pretty. Okay, so let's move on to number three. The number three biggest fat loss pitfall is what I call the sixth man syndrome. Now, most people know that the sixth man in sports is the guy or woman who comes off the bench and they keep the team motivated. They step in and give the team support when they're really needed. Uh, They want you to be successful because even though they're not in the spotlight, they still understand that they're an important part of the winning team. That's the sixth man. That's the mindset of the sixth man. That's the role of the sixth man. The sixth man syndrome is the lack thereof having that sixth man in your life. Now, when it comes to fat loss, the sixth man in fat loss and weight loss program are your friends and family. And to be more consolidated on that, it's your peers. Tony Robbins said that most people's lives are a direct reflection of the expectations of their peer group. So even though we're wanting to set out on this incredible plan, get our body in the best shape of our lives, the people around you, you will find very quickly most times that little things start to happen. They're they're not supportive. They're giving little side comments. You don't find that the environment around you is supportive of you getting to the goal that you want to get to. And this is because not that the people in your life don't love you. 
It's actually because they do love you and they don't want to lose you. We have this built-in mechanism that when we see another individual changing, we're in fear that we will lose them in our life because they're becoming more valuable. It's just built into us. And it's also a mirror pointing back at ourselves, seeing what we're not doing, what we're truly capable of and what we're not doing. So what will happen is the crabs pulling each other back in the barrels phenomenon. Now, we want to avoid that. We want to set you up for success. We want to have the environment around you to be supportive. Because in truth, most people's sixth man sucks. And this is one of the big reasons that is so difficult in our environment, our current society, to get to the results that we want. Because we didn't get a good sixth man going in the first place. And what the reality is, is that it's not it's not them. It's not your peers. It's you. It's you providing them with the tools or helping to create the conditions for them to be the six man that you want them to be. You have to train them. You have to cultivate that environment yourself. And the rewards that they give back to you will pay a million times over. Now, the biggest key that you can take on automatically with up-leveling your six man is you have to get yourself in the environment. You have to get yourself around healthy people, healthy, fit, smart, intelligent people who care about each other. Those people are around. You know, right now with the internet and what that allows us to do, there is no excuse whatsoever to you not getting yourself in the environment of of great people. And even right now as you're listening to this, you're being provided with a tool that has been absolutely free in your life, giving you so much value If you utilize it, you can reprogram your thinking. You can put this on while you're working out in your iPod. You can play this in your car. You can play this while you're having a meal and let this information saturate your mind and reprogram the way you think, as well as sharing it with the people you care about. Because in truth, when you put something in someone's hand that's attractive to them, that's inspiring, you can change someone in an instant. Change happens in an instant. We have this idea that we're programmed with that change takes a long time. Change actually happens in the moment. What takes a long time is getting yourself to the place where you actually make the change. But when you make a decision, for example, to stop drinking alcohol, that change happens in an instant. You know, what takes people a long time is just getting to the place where they actually make the decision to never do it again. And they become someone who is a non-drinker. The drinking is not even a part of their life. Whereas most people, you know, they're counting the days, you know, they'd be like, I have 30 days sober or 30 days, you know, without alcohol. It's basically they're just counting the days back to when they're going to do it again, rather than just being a non-drinker. That's the difference that you can make by providing someone this information, this empowering information and giving them the tools to create your own sixth man and to be the sixth man for other people. Because... We're operating on a more evolved, more intelligent system of this is who I am. I am health. I am beauty. And I have all the tools in my life to make that inevitable. This is very powerful information and most people have no idea about it. As a matter of fact, most people have no idea of what's going to hit them when they start to try to get in shape and take better care of themselves. They simply don't have the psychological conditioning it takes to weather the challenges that come up and to turn those challenges into triumphs. And this is why I actually dedicated an entire section, section two in the book, to breaking through old paradigms and habits, giving tools and strategies for being able to do that. Rather than fighting with yourself, using certain tactics to reprogram that old thinking and doing another thing that I call stacking the conditions which is essentially stacking the conditions in your life to put success on automatic for you. You've got to have that. You've got to have systems put in place so you don't got to think about it all the time. You want to let your mind to be free to focus on creativity, growth, family, fun, stuff like that. If we're constantly thinking about how to make myself healthier and to not screw up, then it's a constant battle. So you have to learn how to stack the conditions. So remember, we do not want to have sixth man syndrome. We want to get and recruit a great team. We want to train our team. And we want to be a great sixth man for the people in our lives who need us as well. All right, so let's go to number four. The number four biggest pitfall in fat loss is choosing against organic foods. 
Now, why would someone do that? Why would someone choose against organic foods? Well, honestly, heartfelt, really open yourself up and be understanding. There are so many different reasons why people would program their mind to think that investing in organic foods is going to be a big problem for them. Number one, they tend to cost more. Number two, they tend to not be readily available. Number three, the cost of living right now is tremendous and it's absolutely ridiculous the kind of financial stress that families are put in, you know, and we all see this. This is it's just absolutely insane, the conditions that we're living in right now. And what it is is that we're really upside down in our understanding on how things, things work. And the system is just set up that way to keep you as a little spoke in the wheel rather than fulfilling your true potential. And part of that is being able to feel good. And understanding that what you're eating is fueling your path, is fueling the way your mind works, your hormones, everything you eat affects the way you think, how you feel, the energy that you have every single moment of every day. The body that you have is a result of the food that you ate a few weeks ago, a few months ago, a few years ago. It's all created the receipt that you have right now and the body that you have. So it's pretty important, but we never stop and look at it like that. So I want everyone to have a more open understanding of why someone wouldn't eat organic foods. Now, the big takeaway here is understanding what does organic actually mean? This means that the food cannot be sprayed with pesticides, fungicides, rodenticides, herbicides, things that are meant to kill insects and rodents. The suffix side means to kill. It means these things are deadly. And most people just, they never got face to face with that to understand why that is. And they're feeding this food to their family. It's basically like taking a can of Raid and I'll spray your apple and then have you eat it right in front of you. You're not going to want to eat that apple. But because we don't see it, most people think that their food is okay. Why would someone put poisoned food into the store shelves for them to buy for the family? Well, the reality is that's what's going on. And most people don't know that. And this is another reason why we're so sick. And having such a hard time losing fat because your body will treat that toxic substance like a toxic substance and shove it into your fat cells. And basically it just increases the fat mass in your system. And this is just from eating conventionally grown sprayed food. Now, let me give you some of the facts. Chemical fertilizers have been shown to create an 85% decrease in nutrient density in plants. So hear that again, an 85% decrease in the nutrient density in plants. So without nutrient density, guess what? Ghrelin is still activated and this will cause you to overeat. So remember that the nutrient density is so important and you're missing out on 85% of that when you're eating chemically grown foods. Now there's two primary classes of these different fertilizers that are used. And both of them are actually used, these are the exact same things used in biological warfare. The first class is neurogenic and the second class is estrogenic. Neurogenic compounds are those things that literally attack your nervous system and destroy the neural pathways. And this leads to things like brain damage, Alzheimer's, autism, on and on and on. It's all been linked to eating foods that have these different pesticides and fungicides used to grow them. The other one, which is much more scary in my opinion, is the estrogenic compounds. And this is pretty much all the different pesticides and fungicides used. These are estrogenic, which means that they create hyperestrogen situations in women's bodies where it would be very difficult to reproduce because the reproductive system is so inflamed and overgrown. This creates things like fibroid tumors and cysts and polyps, stuff relating to the female reproductive system in particular. And for males, this is a radical decrease in the ability to reproduce. Many people don't know this, but the ability to reproduce is down 40 to 50% in the last 20 years. It's scary. We're talking about not being able to carry on the human race because people are exposed to all these estrogenic compounds and now it's really showing its face. These things are not safe and they're not healthy. And One more thing that I wanted to share, and this is another angle with the science, is that 
Dr. Virginia Worthington reviewed 1,230 published studies comparing organically grown to conventionally grown crops. And the results of her findings showed that organic crops had a higher nutrient content or lower levels of toxicity in 56% of the cases. So the data's in. There's no comparison. Organic food is ridiculously better for you. And if you're not eating organic food, you're messing up. And that's just to put it bluntly. And once you know this, you know, knowledge applied is power, not knowledge is power. Once you truly know the facts about it and you still choose to, you know what, it's okay. I'm going to eat these random sprayed oranges and, you know, grapefruits and cucumbers and it's okay. It's just a little pesticides. I'll wash it off. You can't wash it off. You cannot wash this stuff off with some fancy food spray. This is grown throughout the plant itself. And plants, just like your skin, eat. They eat. They absorb these things. And they're in the soil already. Okay? These things have been grown in this soil from the get-go. And if it's in the soil, it's in the food. And if it's in the food, it's in you. That's the way it goes. So we want to go organic. And the argument that people use that, you know, organic food costs more and it's just not worth it. Number one. The nutrient density itself will trigger satiety. And it's been indicated that people who eat organically grown food eat a third less than their conventional chemical cocktail eating counterparts. Okay, so you're going to eat less food. So you're not going to need to buy as much food. Number two, the amount that you save on your health care, which, you know, doctor visits and your investment in you is the most powerful thing that you can do. You are the healthcare, your grocery bill is the healthcare, you know, getting insurance, that's, that's not even worth it. You are the investment. You make the money. You do all the stuff you want to be around for your family. They want you around. And if you're spending money on getting fancy shoes and a fancy automobile, rather than getting you together, you know, making sure you're a fancy automobile, then you have some serious issues in your in your values and your priorities. So it's really valuing you and the greatest gift that the universe has given you is that amazing body of yours. And to put junk food and synthetic things you don't even know how to pronounce into your system is negligent once you know about it. And those that are in the know, the people who are part of the Be Well Buzz community are just saying no to these pesticide laced foods and genetically modified foods we know that and we need to share this information with our loved ones because not only is eating organic foods so much healthier and helping you to avoid the dangers of the pesticides and fungicides but the pesticides and fungicides actually make you store more fat the estrogenic compounds are fat producers it's just the way it is so go organic Avoid conventionally grown foods big time. And one more little side note, just because it doesn't say it's organic doesn't mean it is. Go to your farmer's markets, talk to the farmers, find out their practices. Sometimes it's a complicated quest to get certified as organic and they do things organic anyways, but they're just not certified. And this is the power of getting back in touch with the people who grow your food and as well as growing some of your own food yourself because then you definitely know what's going into your food. All right, last one. Number five and the biggest pitfalls in fat loss. Number five is being a cardioholic. Are you a cardioholic? It's okay. Put your hand up and admit it. That's the first step in healing is just admitting you have a problem. Of all forms of exercise, the one that most people have been convinced by the traditional health and exercise industry is actually the least effective for losing fat. And you've seen it. You've seen the people that come in, they get on their favorite treadmill or elliptical machine for hours, for an hour. Every day they're there sweating it out, doing their cardio confessional after, you know, that big outing the night before or they, you know, they made a cake or whatever. And they're just going at it. And you see them year after year. And they still look the same. Nothing's changed. No one is taking them aside and saying, hey, look, seriously, what you're doing is not working, you know, because, of course, we want to be 
cordial. We don't want to just come up. But I'm that guy. You know, I'm the guy people actually come to at the gym and they'll just start telling me and, I, and I'll tell them, you know, I've seen you doing this whole thing and obviously it's not working for you. You should try this. Now, the science behind it is this, because I'm going to get to the point and get you on your way so you can get the fat loss code in your hands and find out how to do this stuff right. Long aerobic training causes the release of too many glucocorticoids, which are stress hormones. This makes your body store more fat. This is built into the system. Nowhere in our evolution where we just running on a treadmill for an hour. We don't do that. We might sprint a little bit and then rest, you know, go after our food for a minute and then rest. We don't do that, you know, because when you look at the real statistics behind doing cardiovascular exercise, traditionally it takes you a certain amount of time before you get into the, quote, fat burning arena, you know, maybe 20 minutes at your target heart rate and all this stuff you got to monitor. And it can be very complicated and time consuming just to figure all that stuff out. When in fact, we're just setting ourselves up for robotic overuse injuries and triggering our body to be less efficient at burning fat because we're sitting here when our body is built on survival. And if we're just going, 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 going for this long amount of time doing the same thing, our bodies want to reserve that energy. It wants to hang on to it even more. The way to burn fat is this. You have to engage the muscles. You have to do deep muscle work on your fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. You've got to engage these muscles. The more muscle you have, the more fat you burn. It's as simple as this. And I'm going to show you the right way to utilize cardio for burning fat. And it's actually backed up with hardcore science. Okay, there is a way to do cardio for burning fat, but it's not the traditional cardio confessional being a cardioholic. It is not that stuff. And Confucius said, it's simple. We just insist on making it hard. And the recipe of success here is that less is more. You know, it's not the quantity. It's the quality. It's pushing the right button down and getting the result you want rather than pushing a bunch of random buttons like some kind of lunatic over here trying to figure it out. Just push this button. Boom, right there. And you get the result when you've got the right plan in your hand, when you've got the right system in your hand. So bottom line is, if you don't have the fat loss code yet, run. Don't walk. Pick it up right now. We'll have a link right here. Be well buzz right next to this podcast. So take advantage and get into the ranks of the elite. And let's continue together to be the example of health and fitness and continue helping others to transform their lives as well. Share this podcast. Avoid these five killer fat loss pitfalls. And we'll see you next time with much more. All the best. We'll talk to you soon.